Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be an adventure, drama, and fantasy movie from 2024 called Damso. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The film starts with a scene where a king and his knights are fighting a huge dragon. The king soon realizes that the dragon is too strong for them. He shouts, let's defeat this monster for glory. In a distant place, there are two sisters, Elodie and Floria who are princesses of a poor kingdom surrounded by dry and lifeless land. A red priestess came to their kingdom and asked their father, Lord Bayford, for Elodie's hand in marriage. Lord Bayford said yes. Elodie didn't want to at first, but she eventually said yes to help her starving people. The family of four went to another kingdom for Elodie to marry Prince Henry, who is very good looking. Elodie and Henry spent time getting to know each other and Elodie started to think that marrying Henry might have been a good decision because he charmed her right away. Unlike Floria and Lord Bayford, who were happy to marry Elodie to a rich prince, their stepmother, Lady Bayford, felt that something was very wrong with Prince Henry's royal family, especially after seeing how weird her husband acted after meeting Queen Isabel in private. She tried to tell Elodie, but the wedding happened anyway. After the wedding, the newlyweds went to the top of a mountain for an old ritual that Henry said was to honor their ancestors. At the top, Elodie saw Queen Isabel dressed as a red priestess. Queen Isabel gave Elodie a coin and they all went to the altar. Queen Isabel told the story of how their kingdom started when their ancestors found a beast on the island that was killing people and destroying the village. The king called his army to fight back for his people, but it ended badly. The monster made the king offer his three dear daughters as a sacrifice, promising in return to spare his subjects. Faced with choosing between his daughters and many of his people, the king, though he loved his daughters deeply, chose his duty as king to protect his people. A deal was struck, and the beast consumed the three daughters, leading to the founding of the kingdom of Ora. Using the small knife in the ceremony, Queen Isabel cut the poems of Henry and Elodie, and the newlyweds made a blood pact integrating Elodie into the royal lineage. To finish the ritual, Elodie tossed the coin she was given in a deep crack in the ground. Henry then picked up Elodie to leave and head back to the palace. Feeling a mix of apology and terror, Elodie realized she was the next sacrifice. Hearing a soft fluttering sound, she turned to see a light from a cave and found a bird on fire. After helping the bird, Elodie heard a roar and the sound of burning birds. She dodged the birds and called out for her late mother's strength which caught the dragon's attention. When the dragon mentioned sensing royal blood, Elodie understood it was the mix of Henry's and her blood that the dragon detected. Elodie stayed hidden and quiet to avoid being found by the dragon. Once she was quiet, she used a piece of her dress to create light and navigate her way out of the cave. While moving through a tight space, she slipped and fell to a lower area, landing in a cave that was lit up. As she moved towards the light, she came to a gap Gathering her bravery, she jumped across and her dress caught on the rocks, saving her from falling. She used a sharp iron from a corset to climb up. The light came from glowworms and Elodie took some to use as a light source. When she found a water source, she tried to drink but it tasted bad, so she tried catching water droplets from above instead. Suddenly the ice melted and she dodged the dragon's fire breath. Elodie ran into a tighter part of the cave, finding clothes and names of previous sacrifices on the wall, which made her very sad. She checked a big cut on her leg and rested, but she had troubled dreams about the other women who had been there before. In her dream, one woman, Victoria, told her it was all a lie. Waking up to find glowworms on her wound, she initially panicked, but then realized they were healing it. Elodie followed a map on the wall, choosing the middle path at a three-way fork, guided by musical notes and crystals signaling the exit was near. She found a crown with a V on it, hoping Victoria had escaped. However, she realized her mistake when she saw that the exit was just a high opening in the mountain, offering a less painful death than being eaten or burned by the dragon. Elodie noticed some men coming towards the mountain from far away and yelled as loudly as she could to catch their attention. Just as the dragon was about to breathe fire, it heard the men calling out for Elodie. She then went back down, following the sound of their voices until she came into a bigger space where she found the bones of three baby dragons. Elodie was shocked to learn that Queen Isabel's story wasn't true. In reality, the king had attacked the dragon's home for no reason and killed its babies. 
The dragon wanted the king to suffer more than it did, deciding that if three were taken, then three must be given in return. Hearing another voice, Elodie quickly hid, knowing the dragon would hear the men too. The queen was furious when she saw that the dragon was angry, realizing it meant the sacrifice had escaped. She went to the ship, took Floria to offer her to the dragon, and had one of her men stab Lady Bayford, leaving her behind. Despite her injury, Lady Bayford made her way to the mountain to save Floria. There, she met Elodie, who told her stepmother to stay put while she went to rescue Floria herself. The queen attempted to use Henry's hand for a blood pack with Floria's blood, but Henry refused, arguing that Floria was too young to be sacrificed. The queen called him weak, then cut her own hands and made a pact of her blood instead, after which Floria was thrown into the cave. Elodie arrived at the sacrifice site too late and realized her sister must be at the bottom of the cave. She descended, collected glowworms to heal her wounds, and prepared some for her sister. Elodie then cut her hair to create a trap and armed herself with her father's sword. As the dragon checked Floria, it was distracted by the noise from Elodie's trap and flew off to investigate. This allowed Elodie to reach her sister and hide her before the dragon returned. When the dragon discovered them, Elodie threatened it with the sword. The dragon taunted her, saying the sword couldn't kill it. Elodie didn't plan to kill the dragon, understanding that the dragon was also wrong. She tried to reveal the truth that they were not the daughters of the king who killed his babies, but from another kingdom. However, the dragon didn't believe her and became more enraged. As the dragon lay weakened, Elodie took the chance to clarify that she wasn't of royal blood and was merely used by the royal family. Seeing the dragon calm down, she used the glowworms to heal his wounds. Then she returned to the palace to stop another wedding and prevent further sacrifices. Henry tried to apologize, but Elodie gave the guests a chance to escape. Some did, while others stayed in confusion or disbelief. The dragon then eliminated the remaining royal family members. Elodie, with the dragon flying overhead, left the burning palace behind. Later, she, Floria, and Lady Bayford went back to their ship with the dragon, ready to return home. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.